Uh, and I spent the next month kind of, I mean, I could have left it there and said, we tried, we spent a month, we're done. But uh, we sort of soldiered on, as it were, uh, and worked myself through the labyrinth of the, you know, U.S. Medical Command um, and, and tried to find a better person uh, uh, to talk to. Um, but what I did in order to kind of advance this was kind of arm myself with everything I could find about it. I kept asking for it. They kept saying, oh, I've looked into it. It's not available to civilians. Um, and I just didn't think that was the case. I'm not sure you can see it, but in, in uh, uh, September 8th, I did a whole round. I think, did I, did I write the uh, March 3rd I was turned down, or September 3rd, September 4th, September 8th, and I kind of kept at it. Um, and what I did, and I advised this, is used the military's own language to explain why I thought I was entitled. You know, I, this starts, thanks, Sam, I appreciate your attention. This obviously was in response to a no, you really still can't have it. Um, and I said, you know, as I read on it, it says it's available to all military and civilian researchers with a need to evaluate the health of active duty service members. I said, I think that's me. Uh, there was a, a memorandum by the Assistant Secretary of Defense. This isn't me, this is them, saying it's, avail it's, it's for practitioners, policymakers, planners, and researchers. There's nothing in here about, well, you need a direct affiliation, and, and uh, you know, another thing from the guy who put the database together, again saying, you know, it's available. There's nothing with this restriction. And we went around and around, and finally, they said, all right, here's the deal. You know, I think they got tired of us. And so we still don't want to give you the entire million record database. But you tell us what query you would write against that database, what information you want to cull from it, we'll run the query for you and we'll give you the data. And we didn't want to tell them what we were working on, but we really wanted the information. And we kind of went around and around and decided, you know what, if they keep to the word, we can get a good window into this. If they don't keep their word, the world is going to know about that. And we made, we made sort of that devil's bargain with them. And they ran the query. And we spent a couple of months going, they're never going to give us this data. Um, and one day, out of the blue, an email comes in. And one of the things we were looking for, again, we knew that Congress had ordered the military to assess the mental health of all deploying troops. And we talked to members of Congress, and they kind of thought that meant you sit face to face with someone, and they give you the green light before they give you an M16. Um, so we got data on, OK, were they, in fact, assessing the mental health? Was a, a mental health professional seeing every soldier before deployment? And what we found, and I think it's on this, uh, up here of a, a little under a million troops, this is how many, in fact, did not see a mental health professional before deployment. And it may be hard to see, but <laughs> this little bar down here is the number who did. And we didn't actually run this in the paper because we, we couldn't make it big enough for that bar to even show. Um, but we had really good stories. But we wondered, is this people slipping through the cracks, or is there something systemically wrong? And this really helped us advance it beyond that uh, and show that, you know, people are falling down on the job, that they're not doing what their own policies require them to do. All right, so that um, was on the, uh, uh, on the statistical side. We also wanted stories. We had uh, identified a lot of suicides. We had talked to a lot of families. Um, but we didn't have all of the information. We didn't know all of the stories. And we knew that the families didn't have all of the stories either. Um, and so we uh, tried to get, we knew that the military investigates every uh, suicide. There's a, something called the Criminal Investigative Command. It's kind of like the detective division for the military. And they investigate and run a report that sometimes runs hundreds of pages. And as Mark and I both know, sometimes you think you're getting them and then get the little, you know, four to ten page summary. Um, so we requested them. We requested a lot of those reports. And I, I don't know, maybe we wigged them out. But we had this weird back and forth. Um, and, and a lot of sort of bureaucratic this and that. Uh, they, they said, you know, I, I don't think we can give it to you. We can't even look at your request for eight months because we've got to put you at the back of the line. Uh, you know, we, before we look at a, a request for an expedited review or for a fee waiver, uh, we need to know, you know, that this is really being done by a news organization. Now, by the time I was filing these, I had worked for 20 years for the Hartford Current, which is the oldest newspaper in America. And so here I had a representative of the United States government asking me to sort of prove my journalistic chops 
when my newspaper is older than the United States government. Uh, but the weirdest part of the request uh, was this little bit, and, and I, I think it was, had to do with the fee waiver. One of the things they wanted was a detailed and clear publication plan which, for example, lists the precise sources to be consulted. And I'm, I'm like Googling of that exact phrase, and I'm trying to find out, and I'm checking with some people. It astonished me that, that the government would say, well, before we consider your request, can we have a list, a precise list of everyone you plan to talk to? Uh, for this story. So I, I responded to that email. In fact, it was five pages single spaced. Um, and uh, I used lots of, you can see they're like, you know, numbers in there somewhere. I cited court cases and the military zone rules and sort of learned everything I could so I could sort of throw it back at them point by point. And if nothing else, make it clear I'm not going away. And, and, and having that resolve, as Mark knows, uh, is critical. Um, you know, get to the point where giving you what you're asking for uh, is, you know, less of a pain in the ass than not giving you what they're asking for. As for that, can I have the, the precise sources somewhere on page three or four? Um, uh, as I, 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 well, I said I'm not going to address that part and then, of course, immediately addressed it and said, as I'm sure you know, there isn't a publication in the free world that would submit to a governmental demand for the list of the precise source to be consulted, nor, I imagine, is there a federal judge in the land who would look kindly on such a request. And I will tell you, now this was in the context of a letter that began, thank you, I appreciate your efforts, you know, can we work on this? And I will tell you, it never came up again. I, th I think she was embarrassed by it, and it never came up again. And uh, in the end, it took months and months, uh, but we got them. And we got them in time to use a lot of it uh, in the paper. 